Hello, breakout room. Oh, breakout room. <laughs> All right, let's break out. <laughs> uh, I get to take the mute button off. Yeah. Yes, very exciting. Yeah. Okay, Leela completely rocked it. Yes. yes. Oh, Cheers. Oh, Woo. Oh, well oh, done. Oh, Woo. Oh. Congratulations, um, Leela. Thank you. Thank you to Wendy. I'm getting a lot of compliments on hair and makeup and background. And yeah. so I just want to give Wendy a big <laughs> shout out. She, she totally stage managed me and ran me through that speech a couple of times. So thank you, Wendy, so much. I'll do it for anyone. <laughs> no, uh, no Leela, now you have to do that speech over and over and over again. <laughs> that is, is so compelling, so strong. Yes. All right. Uh, Thank you. Can you guys hear me? Yep. All right. Excellent. Sorry, I had the wrong input here. Um, so, hello, everyone. Welcome to our breakout room. Uh, I am Meredith Rose. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Senior Policy Counsel at Public Knowledge. Uh, and I get the distinct honor to moderate a discussion with our IP3 award winning uh, for intellectual property, Leela Bailey of the Internet Archive. Give a rousing speech uh, that, frankly, she needs to give before Congress and a whole lot of other people, uh, though I'm honored that she did a test run on us first. Um, so we're going to have about 15 minutes. Um, I think Leela and I are going to chat for a bit, um, and then we'll all open it up to uh, if there are some questions at the end. I'll try to save a few minutes so that folks can throw them into the hopper, uh, and we can all just bask, bask a little bit uh, in, in Leela's you know, big thoughts. Um, so your, your, I, your volume's a little low for us. Okay, maybe, if, is this a little bit better? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I never said to move my mic. <laughs> okay, so first question. Um, so you mentioned, Leela, uh, some of your background, the sort of origin story uh, when you were in law school. What brought you, what sort of influenced you towards moving uh, in intellectual property and, and getting involved with the work that the Internet Archive is doing? Um, You're well, allowed. There's, there's, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a really long version of that and there's a really short version of that. Um, so for this crew, I'll give uh, the shortest version, um, which is I graduated from uh, undergrad in the year 2000, which was the year that Napster got shut down. Um, and, you know, Napster was a library of Alexandria of music. It had everything. It was incredible. It was the best library we've ever built and we burned it down. Um, and honestly, that really, uh, it really fired me up. Um, you know, I, I really thought the lawyers were going to ruin the internet and I just felt like I needed to get in there and make sure that didn't happen. So, um, I became a lawyer, uh, to kind of work from the inside. So that's, I mean, honestly, that's kind of the thing that lit the fire under my butt to do, um, intellectual property stuff in general. Um, but, uh, but it's on my love of books and music and movies and TV and all of those things actually that, um, brings me, I, I just, I love all of those things so much. And I think it's really important for us to have access to them. And, um, you know, even if you happen to be a really poor kid, um, it's, you know, it's kind of great to be able to read the classics, even if you don't have any money. So that's the short version. Piggybacking on that, you know, you talk a lot about the role of libraries um, in promoting access to works and really kind of, you know, helping to be a social force that evens the playing field um, especially for younger folks, between folks who have access to these kinds of things and folks who don't. And obviously, you know, as your speech talked about, we're kind of at a, um, like, a, on almost a point of flux for libraries in a lot of ways. What do you see, um, what kind of, what do you think libraries are going to look like in 10 to 15 years? Like, what, what sort of role do you see them playing um, you know, be that in terms of the stocks that they have, the, the, you know, licensing that they've got, how they're getting crunched, or, you know, ideally how you, what, what you would like to see them look like in 10 or 15 years in the role you'd like to see them play. Yeah, so um, assuming we win our lawsuit, uh, right, so if we lose our lawsuit, we're going to have Netflix for books, and that's all you get. Um, but if we win, and we've got to win, um, 
really, so Brewster says this better than, than I do, but, but really the internet is the library, right? I mean, that's really the dream of the internet is anybody anywhere can have access to anything. Um, and I get why that's complicated from a legal perspective, but from an idealistic vision perspective, it's simple. Um, it's really straightforward. And frankly, it is what libraries are for. It's, it's what, you know, so, so, you know, at the end of the day, um, the whole internet could be the library. Now, the thing that I think, um, libraries have that needs to stay is librarians. Okay, like we cannot do without the librarians. You can never get an AI that's gonna be as great as Kyle Courtney or Michelle Wu or Dave Hansen or whoever else I should be buttering up whoever's in my room here. But you guys are amazing. Um, and honestly, if I had, I don't know, if I'd known more librarians as a kid, I'd probably be a librarian and not a lawyer. Um, but you guys are amazing and um, we can't, like really, truly, like can't do it without you. Yeah, I ever appreciated how feisty librarians are as a group until I started working on copyright policy. Yeah. <laughs> um, great. So I wanted to make sure that folks have some time to ask any questions if they've got them. I'm also happy to just keep shooting the breeze with, with uh, our IP3 winner here. Um, quick question, what can we do? Um, I know it's the court case, but in addition to the court case, what can the rest of us do to support libraries? I know there were, you know, I grew up in, in the projects in Brooklyn and Queens, and it wasn't public library. My life is very different. So for those of us who love libraries the way you do, who want to support what you're trying to do, what else can we do other than we uh, read the opinion when it comes out? <laughs> well, so um, Larry, I don't know who, you, I don't know what organization you work for, but there's going to be plenty of amicus brief opportunities, so that will be really helpful. Um, honestly, telling the story of your libraries and why they matter, especially to Congress and to other policymakers, um, reminding them that this is something that they need to invest in and care about, um, and that at the end of the day, um, you know, of course. You know, again, I should, it goes without saying, especially in this room, like, of course we care that publishing continues and we care that authors get paid and we care that all of those systems continue to exist, but libraries need to continue to exist too. Um, and, you know, we need to remind our policymakers that um, libraries exist on the internet. And if you regulate the heck out of Facebook in a way that makes it so libraries can't exist anymore, well, that's going to be the world's worst unintended consequence. Um, so I think it's talking to your policymakers, um, telling stories. I mean, look, if you have a great story about something you found and used on the Internet Archive, let me know. We are writing about these things. We are telling those stories. Um, and Meredith knows uh, PK helped us um, do a, a I, I, walkabout is the wrong word. It was, I think they call it a fly-in. But anyway, basically taking uh, our, our passionate, feisty librarians um, around the halls of Congress and, and telling those stories face-to-face, -face, um, that it really does matter. It really does make a real difference. Um, so PK and the Internet Archive can help you do that uh, if you need help doing that. Um, I don't know, Brewster, Wendy, what else can they do? <laughs> We need help in every which way. This is a really, really gruesome fight and the stakes are incredibly high. Um, if every reading event is a licensed event that somebody gets to say who gets to make it happen and who doesn't get to make it happen, we are so screwed. If you can say, oh, women can read this, men can't read this. Oh, oh, people in this um, uh, part of the country can read this, but you can't read that. Oh, we're gonna take away all the older editions. Oh, we're gonna take away that book completely from all libraries right now. That's what's at stake. And it's talked about as, as books, but it's everything. It's every web page. It we would go into a dystopia of uh, basically it's cable for everybody. It is the hundred channels of shit on the on on the internet, and that's what's at stake. So what do we need? We need publishers to sell ebooks. Sell them. Sell them. No yeah, no terms know? of service. 
sell them. And libraries will buy them up a storm. Let's make some people rich by selling ebooks. Yeah, uh, let's, if you know an author, if you know a publisher, if you know an author, um, bring them to us. Make up, we'll yeah. We'll write a check. Yeah. And we a lot of the libraries will write money. checks. We will give them the money. We're happy to give them the money. We want to give them the money. And we need a couple of name brand authors. We need a couple A-listers. You have them in your network. Please help. Back to you, Leela. <laughs> This actually kind of touches on a thing that I know you've talked about uh, before in the context of digital lending and the like role of libraries, which is um, misinformation, which is another big, you know, point of work that PK has been working on about, you know, how do you combat misinformation in the digital ecosystem? And um, can you talk a little bit about sort of how you think about these issues and how they relate to, to access to published works? Absolutely. Right. So, um, so the best way to combat misinformation online is to make sure that we have access to the real stuff, the good stuff, the published stuff, the vetted stuff, the peer reviewed stuff. Right now that stuff is behind paywalls. Uh, libraries can't get it, it's so expensive. Um, I'm seeing my dear, dear friend Kate Miltner here um, in, in the room who is a fabulous uh, professor and a researcher. And um, she was telling me this horror story of uh, not being able to get access to things during her dissertation and she found some cool stuff in Ted Nelson's junk mail. The fact that we had archived that, um, just random stuff that had come to this computer scientist over the years, he happened to keep it in a box, we decided to take it and digitize it, and that then became part of somebody's important research. Like, that's meaningful, right? So we gotta have the published stuff, and we gotta have the random stuff too, right? So that's the thing the Internet Archive does that no, as far as I know, no other libraries do this. We take your garbage, and we will <laughs> we will make sure that it is still available, and that someone like Kate Miltner, Dr. Kate Miltner, can use that in her research uh, about the importance of the discourse around learning to code. Um, that anyway, so so that so having just having access to that is really important. One of the other things that the Internet Archive is doing is trying to find ways to like weave the published works, the books into the web so that we can actually link straight into a book, right? So we're doing that from Wikipedia. We have this great partnership, making sure that, you know, when you cite a book in Wikipedia, you can click right on it. Oh, the breakout room is ending, I'm getting a thing. But anyway, um, I just wanna say hi and I love you to so many of you and I'm so sad that I'm not hugging you. I'm so sad to be <laughs> in the room and not with you. Um, but yeah, anyway, this is, it's so delightful to see all your wonderful faces. And uh, also, I just want to say thanks to Meredith for being such a rock star. She's been such a great partner in all of this work um, and just such a superstar. And it's such a delight and a pleasure to get to work with you and with PK on all of these important issues. And ah, this is so great, but also really sad because I miss you guys. A very strange year. Uh, well, very thank you everybody year. for joining our breakout room. Uh, we're going to head on back and Cheers. everybody can enroll in the drive. Cheers, Cheers Leela. Cheers, Leela. Love you guys.